Hi, I'm Catherine McCord, the founder of Weelicious and the author of Meal Prep Magic. I am thrilled to be here today with the Melissa's community to share three of my favorite recipes from the cookbook and tell you a little bit about it. So Meal Prep Magic really came post pandemic when I wanted to find a way to get my family closer together, eating together as I always have, but specifically after my husband went to the grocery during the pandemic and bought about 200 cans of beans and I had no idea what I was gonna do with all of them. So I wanted to find ways with those basic foods that you have throughout your refrigerator and your pantry to find fun ways to utilize them in different ways. I also realized the connection during that time between organization in your kitchen, making sure that in a very chef's way of mise en place, that you have the organization of the items throughout your refrigerator and pantry, just the way that they look and the way that you can utilize your kitchen in a more efficient way, and then transfer that into meal prep, making sure that you have recipes throughout the week that are really easy to make, but also with tons of flavor from fresh fruits and vegetables, and of course, all the other foods that you have in your refrigerator and pantry. So the recipes we're gonna be making today, I had a bookmark there, <laughs> spatula bookmarks were too, is a green goddess dressing. This makes an amazing dip, especially with my kids when they're racing home from school in the afternoons. I love to get as many fruits and vegetables in them as possible. Um, and it just makes a great salad dressing, awesome for fish. Uh, and everything, but you can see all of the gorgeous vegetables that I've gotten here. We're going to make an, uh, any fruit crisp. You'll see some of my tips and tricks throughout when I'm making it, but it's a great dessert and even breakfast. Yes, you heard it here. You can have it for breakfast. And then last but not least are these crispy smashed potatoes with fried capers, but you can make them in the oven. I also wanna show you how we're gonna do it in an air fryer. So a little bit about me, just so you know, I went to culinary school, worked in restaurants between New York and Los Angeles, really tried to decide what I wanted to do with my culinary career, had my first child, and I realized that making kids great eaters from day one was key to making families come together at the dinner table, enjoying each other, and also just making foods that everyone wants to enjoy. So my first cookbook was called Weelicious One Family, One Meal, and that's something that I really stick by, and you'll see that throughout Meal Prep Magic. There are recipes that no matter your age, they're just things that you want to eat. And then going back to how the meal prep and the kitchen organization all works together, you'll see that if you are using what I call the Pope method, which is purge, get everything out of your kitchen, donate it, give it away, and make sure that you organize it in a really thoughtful way, that's the O in Pope, and then you prep. So that meal prep, which we're gonna be doing today, and executing, that's the 100 recipes with pictures that you're gonna see in Meal Prep Magic. All right, enough with that. Let's start cooking because that's the really fun part. We're gonna be making this gorgeous any fruit crisp. Here's the picture because you're gonna see what we make is gonna look just like this. Um, and it starts with fresh berries. So I have these blueberries. Here's a hot tip. When you buy blueberries like this in the container, I just rinse them, I put water, I gave them a nice shake in my sink to remove the water and then that way you can just pop them right in. So I have three pints here. This recipe is gonna need eight cups total, but watch this. We've got beautiful blueberries. Oh my God, I have to have a bite of these. They're like, they're huge. Mm. Melissa's blueberries are delicious. My kids love blueberries to say the least. Now, if you don't have enough fresh fruit, do not be scared of using frozen. So I've got a bag of mixed strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries to fill it in. And you can just put those frozen right in. You don't even have to defrost them because we are gonna be baking this. Now, we're gonna be adding in a little bit of cornstarch and that's just gonna thicken up our mixture once it's in the cast iron. All right, then we're gonna add in just a little bit of sugar, white sugar, just to sweeten it up just in case they're not sweet enough. And it also add, makes the berries like really thick and juicy when you spoon them into your bowl. Um, a pinch of salt. 
a little bit of vanilla, always vanilla extract. You could also use vanilla bean if you wanted, which is magnificent. A little bit of cinnamon, and you're gonna see how cinnamon plays in our top crust and in our berry mixture. I just, cinnamon is like one of those spices I love, and I find that if you're using spices throughout your dishes, you're gonna see that it's just like adds this huge flavor boost. I was actually at the farmer's market last week and someone came up to me and said, I'm trying to avoid sodium. How does meal prep magic help with that? Well, all of the recipes in meal prep magic are using fresh, real foods. And when you're cooking with fresh, real foods, you don't need a lot of salt. You're gonna see that just a pinch, just to brighten the dish is really all you need. And then a little bit of fresh ginger, just a pinch of that. Um, and then here is a culinary school tip that a lot of you guys probably already know. I like to massage lemons. And if you're gonna get your kids involved in cooking, which you can, you can have them do this or just take your palm, press it right on the lemon and roll it. And what you're gonna end up doing is just releasing all of that lemon juice that's in, in your lemon. Okay, just cut it in half. And then I, I gotta say, I like a, a lemon juicer. This way you get out every single bit of juice. Get your elbow grease in there. <laughs> really squish it. And you can even open it, kind of readjust it a little bit. Mm. Now I've also made this zesting the lemon first, which is pretty awesome too. So don't, don't be scared to add in some lemon zest and juice if you really want to get tons and tons of lemony flavor in your berries. All right. Squeeze, okay, I got it. I love it, tons of flavor. Okay, and then we're just gonna mix this up, get a spatula, and you'll start to see that that cornstarch is gonna already thicken up our ingredients. But you do wanna just make sure that every little berry is coated with its sugar and the cinnamon ginger spices and it's already making, because of those frozen berries, it's already making some juice at the bottom of our mixture. But that's it, like really simple. I like making this in a cast iron dish. I like making a lot of different things. I mean, I make lasagna in a cast iron dish. I make uh, pancakes, waffles. I mean, not waff waffles afterwards, I should say. You, you, that's a whole nother recipe that we're gonna discuss another day. But right back to the fruit crisp. Put it in here. You could also do this in a big Pyrex dish if you wanted. Okay. Get all that goodness right in there. And then we'll spread it out. Ooh, I love this. My son is the one when I, I didn't, I personally didn't even realize that the Any Fruit Crisp was good for breakfast until he was the one that started I would make it for dessert and then he'd be like, can I have that fruit crisp for breakfast? So I have a feeling I know who's going to be eating this tomorrow. Um, for the crisp on top, oats. These are old, overnight or, or old fashioned oats rather. Put them right in here. And then we're going to add a little bit of flour, some brown sugar and brown sugar like texturally just gets that caramely, um, caramely flavor. And it adds a, always like, adds a little bit of kind of like crunch uh, when you're making that crunch and after it bakes. Um, we're gonna add on uh, some cinnamon. And I like to have these types of containers, again, back to the kind of kitchen organization. I love containers like this because you know when you buy spices and they have very small openings, with this type of container, you can put an entire tablespoon right in there, it comes out easy, they're labeled, um, and organizationally you can kind of see everything. It's very I always say if your kitchen is organized, you just feel more soothed. Uh, and then we're gonna add in a pinch of salt and then in some cold butter. And again, you know how I was talking about elbow grease? Just start, this is really fun actually. Just start, you can do it with your hands, you could do it with a fork, but I don't know. I just always feel like so much of cooking is that textural just feel of it. Um, so just gonna mix, mix, mix it all up. And if you're, when you're going through meal prep magic, I want you to notice that I categorize the recipes not by breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack, but much more by the food group. So remember how I was telling you earlier about uh, the canned beans, the surplus of canned beans at our house? It's the same thing with those primary foods that you grab for most. 
Um, maybe it's eggs, maybe it's bread, beans, chicken, fish, frozen fruits like we're doing here. Um, th that's the way that the book is broken up. So that if you have, let's say, pasta, and you have cooked pasta, you can turn it, you can make it on Sunday, and then you can turn it into a few different recipes during the week. And that's just like a, a real key to meal prepping in a way that's really smart, really efficient, and really organized. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna start just crumbling this mixture all over the top of our any fruit crisp. Okay, let me get my spatula out of here because I want to make sure that you can see this. I'm going to move it right up here. Ta -da! Okay, and then just crumble away. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I had a dinner party with 30 women last week. There was actually one gentleman. He was very brave for coming with us. And uh, we made this and we made uh, four pans of it and everyone loved it. It came out of the oven and we put um, ice cream, but you could also do whipped cream. And oh my God, it was, it's like the perfect dessert because it's bright and fresh, pretty light. See, there we go. All right, get it all off. I'm gonna give my hands a little rinse, but you want, I'm gonna show you. Let me just rinse my hands real quick. Woo. All right. I want you to see just how gorgeous it looks. And you'll see when it comes out of the oven, it gets nice and bubbly. Can you see that? Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Ah. Oh. All right, we're gonna put it right into a 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes. We run out of time, but we'll make sure to still show it to you because I bet it's gonna be right on time. Okay, so the next recipe we're gonna make are these crispy smashed potatoes with fried capers. And they are, this has been a recipe that I've made for years and years for my family, um, but it wasn't until recently that I tried the fried capers because it gives it just like a little bit of pop in every single bite. So to make them, it starts with the best potatoes. I like to use, these are kind of gem potatoes. You can see that they have these beautiful colors. And then these are peewee potatoes. So they're, they're for little people. They're just little peewees. Um, but both of them work. You just wanna pick potatoes that are gonna cook at the same rate, the same time. So I went ahead and did this in the interest of time. Um, I've got them right here. Let me pull them off for you. Don't we always feel like, do you know how many pot holders I go through on a, in, a, in a week, in a month? I like destroy pot holders. Am I the only person that does that? So all you're gonna do is take your potatoes, put them into a pot, cover them with cold water, uh, and then you're gonna salt them, like lots and lots of salt, because you, just like your pasta, you want your potatoes to taste of the sea. Um, so you can see, look at some, the water actually turned uh, blue, and you're gonna cook them until they're fork tender. So let's look at that. Let's see how fork tender they are. Ooh, perfect, fork, that's fork tender. So it's gonna depend. Usually it's anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. Um, you just wanna make sure, like for the peewee potatoes, they'll cook in like 10 to 12. Um, for anything bigger, it might take a little bit longer. And then you're just gonna pour the water off. Now usually, the only thing that I should have done that wasn't really smart <laughs> was I hope that I don't burn the heck out of my hand because that might happen. So you know what? Let's take a break from these for just, no, we can actually can't take a break from these because we gotta, we gotta get them cooking. All right, so we'll put them right to the side here. It's like miso en place. You'll see, I'll, sh I'll show you an example of my miso en place in just a minute because it's important to be very nice and organized. So take the potatoes like this hot 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 all right never too hot i feel like after going to culinary school and working in restaurants for years you sort of lose some feeling in your hand which isn't necessarily a good thing either okay here's the towel i've got so i'm going to take my towel just because my hands i don't want to totally burn it you can usually just let these cool uh, you could even for meal uh, for meal prep you could make these the day before and let them cool and then smash them but I wanted to make sure that you could see how nice and hot and tender they are. So that's, that's the potato. I'm just gonna put a towel here and smash. See how easy that is? Look at it, that's, woohoo! Look how perfect it turned out. 
Um, the towel, I've never used the towel method, but I realized today, look how well that works. And see how they just slide right, right over? Um, because I've cooked them long enough. That really is an important trick to this recipe. But look at those, oh my gosh, I want you to see this. Look at that purple potato. Look how gorgeous it is. Just that, you know, it, it, you'll see that after it cooks even, it gets like nice and dark and caramelized on the outside. Mm. But you do wanna make sure that you're smashing them and like flattening them evenly. Um, the reason for that is you wanna make sure that they cook evenly. All right, smash that and this. Okay. And then usually, you can do this in a few different ways. So in, uh, in Meal Prep Magic, you would put them on a baking sheet um, coat them with a little bit of oil. Today, I wanted to show you a section of Meal Prep Magic that I love because we use my air fryer a lot, to say the least. Um, and in Meal Prep Magic, you'll see that every single recipe shows you different ways to cook it and utilize it. So I show you in the back, there is an index for air fry every day. So it takes you through all of the different recipes, including these crispy smashed potatoes uh, that can be cooked in the air fryer. So if you have a toaster oven, a regular convection oven, or an air fryer, it's gonna work perfectly. So what we're gonna do is take the air fryer basket. I'd love to know, you guys can leave me a comment um, how you, if you use an air fryer, because I wanna, I wanna hear. I like to know who, who uses their air fryer. And then we're just gonna put them in here like this. Make sure that one's nice and flat. And you don't wanna overcrowd it. This is a really nice sized air fryer um, with what they call a garbage basket. Okay. And then we're gonna just spray them. So having some cooking spray, some olive oil spray, just to coat them. I'll show you how I do that. Woo -hoo -hoo. Okay, I'm gonna actually put, let's see, I put this here. All right. And then I like to use um, olive oil spray in a can. If I'm going to coat them um, to be put in the oven, you can give it a nice drizzle or you can use the air edit oil spray. It's just an easy way to coat them evenly, totally evenly. Um, and then you could salt and pepper them if you didn't already salt and pepper them a lot when you were boiling. But, um, but I've salted my water a lot, so I think that they are like perfect, spot on. And then we're going to do capers. So. I have some capers that I already drained and blotted dry. You wanna make sure you remove as much moisture from them, from them as possible. And we're just gonna pour them right on top in the air fryer. You're gonna see, see, none of them, none of them came out. <laughs> They're just all right in there. And we're gonna put this in our air fryer, 400 degrees for about, let's see here. Let's put them in, well, I think that we're gonna probably be at the right time where you're gonna see how crispy they get. Uh, I'm thinking uh, 12 minutes, let's see. Let's just see, we're gonna check back in on them in just a second. Woo, that pot is still nice and hot. Um, and then the third recipe that we're gonna make, this is one, like I was telling you guys earlier, that my family absolutely loves. It's a green goddess dressing. So it's nice and creamy, but what's great about it, it is this, the, building, the base of it is Greek yogurt. So Greek yogurt, um, lots and lots of protein, plain Greek yogurt we always keep on hand because you can always zhuzh it um, with fruits if you want it more sweet or you can have like, um, you know, fresh herbs if you want it to be um, more savory. So I take a blender like this. You can just kind of use any kind of food processor or blender is going to work for this. And we're gonna go ahead and, oh, I wanted to show you this. So you know how I was talking about like culinary school and meal prep? I would say that, you know, the, the meal prep is akin to mise en place. And in, you know, in uh, culinary school or in France, it, mise en place just means like preparing it, preparing it ahead, having everything on a sheet pan like this. So even if you are meal prepping, and you're gonna come home and you're gonna cook something, it's nice to have everything on a sheet tray. This is actually how my husband cooks. So, cause he likes to have everything ready, measured, just so that everything moves even faster when he is cooking. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do is put our, let's see, how am I gonna do this? I will put this here so that you can see it. Okay, 
put our Greek yogurt right in here. Just put it at the bottom. Mm. I always have plenty of Greek yogurt. It's like one of our staple ingredients in our house. And I should even say that I always suggest, and it's in the book, that um, it's important to have your favorite ingredients around at all times. So if you're a single person, you're a couple, um, you have a family, interview everyone in your house about what are their favorite 10 foods. And then always keep them on hand so that you can mix and match them and utilize them in different ways. So again, one of our favorites is Greek yogurt. Um, then I'm gonna put in a little bit of anchovies or anchovy paste. I like the paste because you can really control the amount that's gonna go in and you can always, instead of opening a whole can of can, a can of anchovies um, you know, that you might not get to very often, this little tube of magic is going to you know, be good in my refrigerator for a while. And you know when people talk about that umami flavor, that just like salty flavor, that is a lot from anchovies. So anchovy paste, best friend in the kitchen. Um, and then we're gonna add in some garlic powder. So if you don't have fresh, always go for your you know, garlic, dried garlic powder. That's what I was saying earlier. Just having those seasonings around um, in jars like this or anything you really like, but having um, that is, it's just in dry, dry uh, spices make everything just like bigger flavor, tastier, uh, and building blocks for other foods. And then we're gonna add in herbs. I love herbs. I actually, I have a garden outside, so I just grabbed this fresh parsley. You could use curly parsley, you could use flat leaf, you can use really any herbs that you love um, for this green goddess. So I've got some fresh dill, cilantro, um, and uh, parsley, but you could also use tarragon. Um, you know, I wouldn't, you could use a little rosemary, but it's very powerful. So I tend to think that it's like much more of your fr fresh, spring um, herbs. That's, that's, that's the direction I would go. Um, give it a, just a little chop because you want it to, you know, puree up really fast. So get it all in there. Mm, I love this. So I was telling you earlier about that party that we had last week um, and I had this beautiful salmon that I had gotten at the farmer's market and um, I, you know, there's a recipe in Meal Prep Magic for an air fried salmon but we decided to broil it, again, using whatever kind of cooking equipment that you have at the time. And um, I, I was like, oh, I, I, you know, a, a simple salmon is great, but like with this gorgeous green goddess on top, you can just utilize this dressing in so many ways on chicken, on steak. I mean, it's just, it's magnificent. So with your, um, when you're making this, don't throw away your stems, your stems from parsley and cilantro, they have tons of flavor, sometimes even more intense um, and fresh tasting. So get, get them right in there. And then we're gonna add in some lemon juice. Again, I'm gonna roll my lemon. Give it a roll, give it a roll. Get my sheet pan out of here. So see that sheet pan, just like everything right there. I'm not running around my kitchen looking, looking for anything. Um, and again, you can also use your, use your zester if you want to. And then put this right in there. And we, use, we go through a lot of lemons in, in our house. Lemon's another staple. Uh, you can use bottled juice, but I'm always like, the fresh. It's just, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty delish. Okay. Ooh, get it in there. When I was a kid, like a little kid, um, you know, a lot of chefs will tell you that they learned to cook from their grandparents watching them and that was just like me. I would sit in Kentucky where I'm from, um, Louisville, Kentucky, and I would watch my grandmother cook and it was amazing. She, they grew a lot of their own food. That's where my love of fresh produce and uh, you know, fruits and vegetables really came from. The back of their yard, they had this huge compost. So you would just see them, they would throw everything back there, any kind of like fruit and vegetable scraps, and it would just like this mulch, it would just grow like these gorgeous tomatoes. And I, you know, just being in my grandparents' home and sitting in their, you know, in their kitchen and stringing sugar snap peas and freezing blueberries and, you know, that kind of love and passion for fresh produce just came alive there um, and really can, continues today with my family, kids, um, and delicious. And, and then we're gonna add in the olive oil. So we're gonna do about a half a cup 
uh, give or take. This is the time to use a really good olive oil, something that you that you love the flavor. Um, in our house, we also do olive oil taste tests. Same thing with chocolate. Like when you're using these kind of delicious, simple, raw ingredients, you want to use high quality or something that you love the taste of because we're not going to be cooking with this. We're just pureeing this mixture and it's going to go right on, you know, at, at, just to be like have our fresh uh, vegetables used as a dip. So it's, it's the flavor of your olive oil is really, really important. All right, zip it up, put it in there. Now, now it's the fun part. Zhuzhing it. Okay. I want to show you, I'm going to pull the picture up because I want you to see kind of at the same time. Get it all in there. Okay. Give it a shake, give it a little cocktail shake. Okay, here we go. Now. So beautiful and you can see it doesn't take any time we're really just leaning on the fresh herbs uh, from the garden or your farmers market or wherever whatever you like um, and I should say that we, when you're talking about the Greek yogurt you can use any kind that you want you could use um, non-fat low fat full fat anything anything you've got on hand and of course I've got all the Melissa's fresh fruits I mean, fresh vegetables here, although my kids would say, funny enough that I kind of tripped on that, cucumbers and tomatoes, anything with a seed is a fruit. So, fruits and vegetables. Now watch this. I'm gonna pour it right in. Oh my God. Ah! It's, it's spectacular. It is so gorgeous. And just like the, the picture, I can even give it a little grind of pepper, because why not? Um, I was looking, I was like, where is my pepper? Just to give it just like a touch of eye appeal. Unless everything falls over. Put it right back. Oh, this is another thing. This is my Lazy Susan. So I like to keep everything here. All of, all of my oils and salts, um, honeys, so I can just grab them really easy. That's another thing with just cooking and having everything right at your, at your fingertips. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is, this is my happy place. Ready? Mmm. Mmm. That lemon with the fresh herbs, the salt. Oh my god. It's so unbelievably delicious. So, like I said, we're finishing three recipes today. This is our first one. Now we gotta go check on our potatoes. This is what I'm talking about. Holy moly, look at that. They are so crispy on the edges and those fried capers, but wait, we're not done. All right, first let me get them in here. Have everything right here. Just gonna put them on a plate because mentioning magic, wait, wait for the rest of the magic to happen here. Mmm. They're so good in an air fryer, and the air fryer just literally just gives everything that crispy exterior, that tender interior, and it cooks at half the time sometimes too, and you don't have to preheat your oven, so especially in the summertime, it's perfect. Okay, ooh, I love it. That, that, that concentrated taste from those crispy capers. Ooh! All right. Okay. And then, the piece de la resistance, a little bit of that Parmesan right on top. Look at that, 
look at that. Ooh, and it starts to just almost like melt a little bit. And I wanna show you, cause it's always fun, right? To see the befores and afters. Page 124, look at this. Everything that you want, plus wait, a little bit of parsley. And that's it, just gonna to touch it with that fresh parsley from the garden. I mean, talk about dinner. This is the best night for me to be able to cook with you guys because I'm basically getting my family ready for meal time, meal prep central. Okay, so we've made the green goddess, the crispy potatoes with the fried capers, and now let's go check the oven. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Look at this. Oh my. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. All crispy on top. That cornstarch just like makes it like syrupy and beautiful. I mean, when you are having friends over for dinner or really any kind of family night, isn't that the kind of dessert that really is like a showcase, a showstopper? Now, what I like to do and make sure, this is always another fun trick, make sure that no one touches that handle and I always put a pot holder right on the end just to make sure. But once this cools, I like to spoon it into bowls, put some ice cream, some whipped cream, and like I said, for dessert, for lunch, for breakfast, it just makes the most delicious balanced meal. And you're getting some oats in there and tons of berries, so also really got a lot of health benefits in there too. You guys, meal prep magic. I hope that you have your copy just really to like dig into your meal prep, getting all those hot tips and tricks for kitchen organization, and most important, that you are cooking with fresh produce, getting family and loved ones together uh, to make sure that you really cherish your meal time and make it as filled with meal prep magic as you can. Thanks to Melissa's for this awesome time that we spent together. Um, because honestly, the best produce you can get. Thanks.